Hey, hey, friends. Hey, 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 let's make sure everything is connected here. I have my computer connected to my phone and let's just make sure everything is coming up together because sometimes technology likes to play a fun game. All right, I think we are live. Awesome. Hey guys, how are you? Um, Gwen here and I want to talk to you about Debt Snowball versus Debt Avalanche. One of my amazing um, members of our Financially Free group asked this question and I was like, you know what, Joel, this is a really great question. Sorry, I think I'm blocking my face. This is a really great, great question to go live about because this is a question that so many people have. Um, so if you don't know, my name is Gwen and I am on a mission to help women mostly, but men get to benefit from this too, become debt free and reduce stress in their life. And it is, it feels so good. So if that's you, then you want to listen up. If you have debt, which is like 95% of America, <laughs> these tips are going to help you. So let's talk about debt avalanche and debt snowball and which way is going to be better. Now you guys all know Dave Ramsey. I'm sure he's a huge uh, debt-free advocate and he teaches people how to get out of debt. And so I want to talk about um, and with that being said, you've probably heard of debt snowball. So I want to talk about the, dif the difference between debt avalanche and debt snowball. So a debt avalanche is taking a look at all the debts that you have. And I'm talking everything. Like if you owe somebody money, it is a debt. You're taking a look at all the debts that you have and you're writing them in a list from top to bottom of the ones that have the highest interest rate at the top to the ones that have the lowest interest rate at the bottom. Even if you have a $20,000 car loan at like 20% um, and you have a $2,000 student loan, which please, uh, $2,000 student loan at 6%, right? So the $20,000 student uh, car loan would be at top because it's got 20% interest. So debt avalanche focuses on paying the debts first that have the highest interest rate. Now, the reason why people think that this is going to work is because they think they're gonna save themselves money. They're like, well, I'm getting charged more for this debt that has a higher interest rate, so wouldn't I wanna get rid of that? Well, you're gonna see that that's not necessarily the answer. I'm gonna give you a couple of tips that are gonna help you pay off your debt faster. So that's the way you pay your debt avalanche. So you pay off that first debt first, the $20,000 at 20% interest rate, right? And then you move on to the next debt. Now, some of the teachings of debt avalanche are a little bit fuzzy. Um, they're not super clear on the next step after you pay off the first debt. A lot of people talk about uh, trying to reduce your interest rate on your credit card or transferring a balance uh, to a lower interest rate credit card. But I'm going to be honest with you and tell you, because I've been there and I've done that, um, it costs you money usually when you transfer uh, one debt to another debt. So say you found a credit card that had 0% interest for 18 months and you're going to take a debt that you have here and you're going to transfer it to this card they charge you a percentage. So not only are you maybe saving money in the long run, but you're not saving money up front because you're going to be spending usually 3% at least on the debt that you have to transfer it over. And if you have a large amount of debt, they're not always going to let you transfer the full amount of debt over. Like you have a $30,000 credit card. Most credit cards will not allow you to transfer over $30,000 to a 0% interest credit card. So you think you're gonna save money by paying off the one that has the highest interest rate first, uh, but you're actually not. Debt snowball is taking your lowest amount of debt and paying that first. So you're gonna list all your debts in a list, and the first one that you pay off is the one that has the least amount. So this one would be flipped, right? So you would have your student loan debt that's $2,000 at the top of the list. That's your lowest amount of interest that you have to repay to for one person. And you're going to attack that debt first. And what happens when you finish off paying that debt? First of all, it happens faster, okay? So you finish paying that $2,000 debt. Then you take the minimum amount that you are paying on that debt and you add it to the next one. So say you have a $4,000 car loan. Well, now you're going to take what you were paying on your $2,000 and that's gone. So now you have extra money to pay towards your next debt. That is a snowball effect because as you go along, you pick up more and you pick up more and you pick up more. Hey, Joel, um, this was such a good question. Thank you for asking it. Um, 
I, you're probably going to want to jump back to the beginning and watch again, but uh, we were just talking about defining the difference between debt avalanche and debt snowball. So debt snowball, you pay the least amount first. Here's the debt snowball versus the debt avalanche conversation. With the debt snowball, you're going to pay off smallest to largest. With the debt avalanche, you're going to pay off the highest interest rate first to the lowest interest rate, okay? With the debt snowball, you're actually going to have more motivation because you're able to pay things off faster. Smaller debt, you're going to pay off faster. It's going to keep you motivated to keep going because you're like, wow, that debt's gone. That was easy. I'm ready to attack the next debt, right? Whereas the debt avalanche where you're paying the highest interest rate first, it's going to take a toll on your motivation because you're not going to see success for a long time. You're just going to keep working and working and working. And I don't know about you, but whenever you start something, like you want to start to see successes right away. Because once you, if you're working hard at something and you don't start seeing successes right away, it's really hard to keep the motivation to keep going. Debt Snowball is going to give you that instant motivation. You're going to pay things off faster and you're going to be ready to roll it into the next one. On average... In uh, debt snowball, people are paying off debts in about an 18 to 24 month time frame. So you've got one debt, you know, maybe you, you swipe that first one off in the two months and the next one it takes you four months to do and the next one, like total of your debt, total, you're paying off in 18 to 24 months. That is a amazing amount of time to pay off your debt. Doesn't that feel good when you think about that? Like if I... Did a year just go by for you super fast, regardless of what kind of situation that you were in? Yes. So imagine paying off all your debt in 18 to 24 months. Magic. With debt avalanche, it's going to take a really long time for you to pay off that first debt because you're starting with the biggest. So your time frame in paying off all of your debt um, might not be short. It might be pretty long. So that feels pretty bad to me. I don't want to have to harp on my debt any longer. And also you guys, can we just go back to step one of paying off debt? Step one of paying off debt, regardless of how you're going to do this debt avalanche or debt snowball, is to stop adding debt to your plate. And the only way that you know how to do that is to budget. And I know that word like gets such a negative vibe and everyone's like, I don't want to budget my money. No, I want you to know where your money's coming in and where your money's going out. Once you know that, then you know what you've got in the middle to work with. You should have X amount of money to throw towards debt, to throw towards having fun and to throw towards investing, right? So if you don't budget, you don't know where your income and your expenses are going. You can't know how much money you have to pay off debt. So that's your first step. Okay. And then my last point about debt snowball versus debt avalanche is um, with the debt snowball, you're going to quickly pay off of multiple debts in a row, right? Like you're going to, you're just going to snowball. It's going to be quick. It's going to be fast. After you get that first one, you're going to get to the next one. You're going to get to the next one. Have you ever seen a snowball run down the mountain? <laughs> it just picks up, it picks up, it picks up, it picks up, it picks up until it's a big snowball. Once you pay off those first several bills, you're going to start to see this light at the end of the tunnel. Debt avalanche just doesn't give you that same perspective, right? You're like, what light at the end of the tunnel, Gwen? Like, I still have a ton of debt and it took me so long to pay off the first one. It doesn't feel like there's a light at the end of the tunnel, right? So that's your debt snowball versus your debt avalanche. Now, there are other things inside of there that the Green Gap program has taught me to do and has allowed me to uh, tackle my debt faster. And it's talking about that gap. Remember we talked about that gap between the income that you have coming in and the expenses that you have going out, right? So once you know what's left, after you've paid all your necessary things, you've got this green gap. Hopefully it's green, right? And you can take that and apportion that to pay down debt, to invest in the future, and then to stock a little bit away to have fun. Because I don't know about you, but if I have to keep going to pay down debt, like I, <laughs> I need to be having a little bit of fun. One of my friends is doing uh, 52 first dates with her husband. This is not a debt related conversation, um, but because of the way that we're apportioning our gap right now, we can't do 52 first dates, but I was like, that is such a great idea to do 52 first dates with your spouse or your husband or whatever. You could even make it up, you know, 52 first adventures with your kids. Like you could make it anything, but imagine having something to look forward to every single week. But you can change that according to how you're paying down your debt. If you have this amount of money apportioned for fun in your month, 
maybe you do 12 months of first dates and they don't have to be go out and have first dates. I mean, you could recreate uh, a first date at home at your kitchen table. There's this great book that someone uh, actually mentioned to me last week called The Adventure Challenge and it's for couples and it has like this little scratch off sections in there. And um, every time that you're going to go on a date, on a date, whatever that may be, you scratch off the ticket. It's an adventure and you go do this adventure or you have the adventure, whatever it is. Um, and that's just a, a fun little way to take the apportioned money that you're putting aside to have fun every month and put it towards something that you can look forward to. So nobody wants to just pay down debt and not have any other fun for the rest of their life because, you know, we only live once. We only live once and who knows what's going to happen in our lives. We have to be having fun. We have to be enjoying ourselves, but also we need to be getting rid of that debt so that we can have more fun in the future, right? The longer we're here. So take that 10%, portion it to your fun, and then you can pay down your debts with what's left in that green gap. You can put money towards investing and you can put money towards paying down your debts. And I promise you that that debt snowball will carry so much momentum for you that you'll forget you even started. Like it'll be like a no brainer to get you going. So Joel, I hope that was helpful. That question specifically came from Joel and I thought it was so good to talk about that. I wanted to bring it here for you guys. Um, I can't see all the comments, so I'll come back in and I'll make sure I answer any questions. But if that's the kind of conversations you want to be having, if you want a place where you can ask questions about how to reduce debt, if you need help reducing debt and reducing stress in your life, just shoot me a message. All I have to do is add you over to our free group where I'm sharing all these tips and trip tips and tricks. I'm sharing little tidbits that can help you move along faster because I'm on the same train as you are. Like we're paying down debts too. Okay. Nobody's perfect. We all have to start somewhere. But what I've learned from Green Gap and from what's available to, to me in my coaching career is all this information that will help you do it a little bit faster and a little bit better and you'll feel so much better. So if you're wanting in on that, I'm happy to add you to our free group. Just comment here or send me a message and, and let's chat and let's attack debt and let's reduce the stress in our life because once you reduce debt in your life, I guarantee you all the other key areas of your life start rolling together a lot better. I love you guys. I hope you have an amazing day. I will chat with you later.